Okay. All right. Well, welcome back uh, to our construction and builder se series, everyone. I am Danielle Plesky Brown, and this is my co host, Raj Tamang. And we're here to continue our conversation about uh, building, developing, construction, and the most important things you need to know as a potential realtor, investor, developer, or just investor, developer, if you're not an agent like myself. Um, and today, I'm pretty excited to talk about this because I feel like a lot of people have questions about what materials make walls up because you hear terms like sheetrock and you hear other terms like plaster and, and all of these things um, and also what's below those so like plywood and other different types of sheeting so I'm very excited to build off of what we were talking about last week on um, foundations and, and framing and now moving on into like how do you cover that frame up yeah all right so uh, so tell me a little bit about you, you kick this off. I'm not even sure where to start because obviously like you walk into a house and like, here, I have walls, I have walls, but I have no idea what actually makes them up. Like, what are they made of? Okay. Yeah. So, um, after the foundation, you start with the framing, right? Yeah. Um, and the residential construction we call a light frame construction is all wood, right? We don't do anything with the steel. You sometimes you have a light gas. We call light gauge construction, uh, which mm -hmm. is a metal starts. Uh, we use metal starts uh, mostly in the commercial construction, office buildings, or you know bigger projects um, as a partition walls. Um, mm -hmm. But in the new construction, with the residential construction, pretty much you know ninety nine percent is wood frame construction. And sometimes I've seen some project on light grades uh, constructions too. So with, with all the walls, um, pretty much all the wall framing is a two by four or two by six, right? Lumber. Um, then floor system, we say TJIs or EWP engineer wood product. Those are floor system. In your trusses, roof trusses are roof trusses, right? Those are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all lumber. Um, so now when we said, uh, so that's the framing part. So you have to enclose the building, right? So you enclose yeah. the building from outside and also you have partition walls or dividing walls inside a house, um, a, a different type of construction. So when it, let's just start from the exterior construction. So the exterior wall of the house, usually it's two by six, right? Um, there's a lot of builders, they use two by four because of the cost, um, but there's mm -hmm. a difference between two by four and two by six, not just in you know, a size on construction, but also uh, the, the a lot of things you can't do or you cannot do with two by four versus two by six. I'll give you an example. So two by four may be structurally okay, but because of the thickness of two by four, which is three and a half inch only, your insulation, right? Exterior wall insulation is yeah. only three and a half, which is R15 is the best you could do. Um, if you want to do R19, then you can't really do it two by four unless you put uh, insulation board or foam board outside, which is the additional cost, right? Mm, um, okay. But now with all new, uh, you know, local court IRC, we call IRC, which is the court that governs the residential construction. IRC mm -hmm. is International Residential Court. Um, that governs all the design of residential construction. It's every year is it's evolving, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it used to be 100 page code, now almost like 500 case, uh, page code. Same book, it's evolving. Maybe I guess they are doing more research. They have more data from the past, the performance of the building and all that kind of thing. They put together, prepare code. So these code requirements are changing every you know three, three years to five years. That's what I usually do. Wow. Um, and so it's pretty frequent. Like you yeah, have to really but, stay up on this. But this the funny thing is right now in Fairfax County, we use IRC 2015. So okay. still we, we adopted IRC 2015 uh, last year, I believe if I remember correctly, but now it's 2021 already. So this adoption process is a little bit delayed, you know? Um, some it. of the counties in, uh, Mon uh, in uh, especially in DC, um, and in Maryland, they already adopted 2018, uh, IRC 2018. Fairfax just started, you know, 2015. It's going to take a couple of years to 
to to move on to the next page, which is good. It really doesn't make that much difference, but you know, um, of course, they are doing a lot of research. They have a lot of data available. So depending on that, their requirements are all changing too. You know, for all good, structurally sound, also performance of the building, you know, energy efficient, all kind of things, right? Yeah. Those are the things plays in the in in a role of uh, you know updating the node co new code requirements. Now the exterior wall we say two by four, two by six. Now, see you see inside the house pretty much a gypsum board, right? Gypsum board, um, a drywall. Yeah. Okay. It's usually a half inch drywall, um, and there's a reason why it's a half inch. It could be five eight, but if you do commercial construction, it could be uh, two ply half inch. The rule of thumb is if you have a half inch drywall, it will uh, uh, it's it's a directly related to the fire. So if fire happens in the one corner of the house, in the office, in the room, yeah. If you have a drywall, the drywall will hold about an hour to 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 uh, for that fire not to spread out. That's that's the logic with half inch, um, but. Um, you know, drywall. Now, if you go commercial, so you, the requirements are different. So you have to have a one inch thickness at least. Um, that means you have to use two ply of drywall. You know. Mm -hmm. So you know, drywall has also it's it's covering the space, giving the privacy, but also it has a functional. It's for the fire rating. Hmm. Okay. Then in between the studs, like I said, is um, you know insulation, and outside we have the OSB board okay. which is oriented this strand board or plywood um but like i say nowadays 9900 percent of the time we use osb um then plywood plywood is a little bit expensive than <laughs> osb um so you know and performance so what, is, what is osb made of exactly is it also a type of wood or is it more of a plastic or combined product yeah. like, what is it made of yeah it's all wood it's all wood chips they compress together with the chemicals and make a board. Got it. Um, so it's structurally. I've seen, uh, I've seen that a lot. Yeah, correct. It's almost like micro lamy alveol beam. Uh, is that it's a lot of pieces of wood that chipped and chemically compressed together make a board, which is more structurally more sound than regular plywood. Regular plywood is they build with you know you have a big wood uh, piece. They cut it. Um, you know, in the longitudinal direction of lumber. So when you see the plywood, you see the smooth surface, you know? Yeah. It's a so smooth surface like plank plywood. coming. So plywood is not as structurally sound as OSB. No, it's pretty much the same, almost the same. But okay. OSB could be maybe 5, 10% stronger, depends the construction of it. But hmm. I, I was saying it. OSB and uh, plywood, if you compare it structurally, it's the same. There is no difference. But the cost is on plywood is more expensive. Um, huh. So pretty much all the exterior seating and the soft floor, we use OSB, right? There is no reason going with the plywood, going the expensive. So the difference is, is, the, um, is the finishing. If you want to have a finished wood, uh, and pl plywoods, of course, finished. You'll see it, right? It's a smooth surface. Yeah. But OSB, you see a lot of chips of pieces there. It's like very rough. But you have to remember, um, especially sitting from outside the building, roof decking, plywood subfloor, or subfloor, eventually you're going to cover with something, right? Outside with OSB, you're not going to see from outside. You have a, you know, siding, or a stucco, or a brick veneer, a stone veneer, whatever it is, it's gonna cover anyway. So yeah. there is no reason going with the plywood. You know, there are other things also, moisture, they call moisture content, or drying, uh, you know, speed. It's a like, oriented board, a OSB can dry quicker. Oh. Plywood may take a little bit of time, because it's a natural wood, you know? Yeah. It's oh, like, sure. you know, it takes time to dry up. OSB, it's usually, um, I, have to, I have to go back, maybe it's vice versa, but, um, <laughs> but, but there, there's something different in moisture content, but you know, this OSB, you install outside, then you have a waterproofing from outside of the paper, right? The Tyvek water paper, 
a waterproofing paper from outside, then you have a siding. There is no water is not going to get into it. So OSB yeah. is definitely, you know, you, it's cheaper and it's structure the same. Um, but the plywood soft floor, soft floor is the same. Soft floor, you do OSB. But if you have, if you want to have exposed, to, you know, flooring, then you want to probably do plywood so you see smooth surface. Mm. So I, I have not seen any application structurally in a building where we require plywood, not OSB. So that's why I say pretty much all the new construction we do, or new construction or renovation, we do OSB. Yeah. That makes sense. So, like, how much, how much less right now are you seeing price wise? is OSB versus plywood? Because I know plywood is at like super premium right now. <laughs> I I hear that a lot. Um, like, well, lumber prices at the time of this, what are we in the middle of September, 2021 filming this? Um, right now, lumber prices, while they may have dropped a little bit, certain types of lumber have remained at record highs. And that one of being, mm -hmm. um, certain types of stick lumber and plywood being the other and plywood being in like every part of a house <laughs> when you're being well the, the big main parts flooring and roof being kind of i guess the two biggest parts but i'm probably missing a bunch in there as no, well no, that's good no the osp like i said that's the you know roof decking because you have to cover the roof um mm -hmm. then you have a wall seating from outside um mm -hmm. then the then soft floor Right, um, so it just that uh, their thickness is a different thickness. Usually, your soft floor is three quarter inch plywood uh, OSB. The wall yeah. seating is seven sixteen. That's minimum required by code. And uh, um, usually, on the roof is a half inch. Hmm. So it's a different thickness. Because of course, if it's thicker it is, more expensive it is. Of course. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, so I have seen some people, they still use 716 on the roof deck decking, but I never use it because you will have a problem, um, especially in our area. This is what happens. You have to remember, when you say 716 uh, instead of half inch, means you are using a thinner OSB board. Yeah. So in the roof, your roof trusses are spaced 20, uh, 24 inches on center, mm -hmm. right? So now that you have a you know OSB decking over it, um, so if this is snow or, you know, heavy snow, they're one foot, two foot of snow on the, on the roof. I have seen many places that if it is, the roof is not, it's not, you know, it's not too high pitch. It's, you know, relatively slow, uh, you know, relatively, I say flat, maybe four yeah. to six, you know, six to 12 slope. Usually you can have 12 by 12 slope, means 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, six by 12 or eight by 12 is very common. So if you have, let's say four by 12 slope pitch or six by 12, and you have a high, uh, you know, one foot or two foot of snow, um, after the snow, you will see the between the trusses is kind of a little bit sagging. Oh, you got can it. Wonder, right? to see like a little dip. Yeah, it's a roof. dipping on the like web. Ooh. And that's from the the plywood getting too saturated and bending. Yeah, and not just not the it's weight. not saturated. The thickness of the OSB yeah. is, is not um, thick enough. Got it. It's so not strong enough. It's, it's not strong enough, correct. So instead of going 716 thick uh, OSB, which I've seen a lot of builders they use, and especially these big builders are supposed to be the best, but that's what they do. To save money, you know, I even see, I was talking with one of the, you know, builder two weeks ago. Uh, I don't want to name call, but, you know, there yeah. is a big developer who do a lot of, uh, you know, hundreds of new construction in down Gainesville, Loudoun County. Yeah. Um, when you install the floor tiles, you're supposed to have a cement board, right? Yeah. Yeah. They don't use that. They use plywood. What happens now? A couple of years, you all the tiles will crack. Yeah, it's a crack, it's, and yeah. all the crack, all the bathroom is out. All the bathrooms, everybody where the tiles are, it's all out. It's so oh, amazing. It's such a bigger builder nationwide. Even these guys are international. Um, wow. Developer can't do stuff like that, you know. Well, and you know, after a year or two, that's when your builder is not warranted certain things like your tile anymore. 
Yeah. Like in that one, two, 10, I know in a couple of um, our episodes that we've done here, I've mentioned that kind of a builder warranty that you, what, what needs to be warranted, like by law in certain states and counties, like they can kind of uh, differentiate, but the, the general gist in the DMV area is a one, two, 10. The first year being basically like bumper to bumper, like everything is covered to a, mm-hmm. to an extent, you know, not if they like do something crazy and blow up their own house, but like everything's covered yeah. you know, for the most part. But by the time you get past year two, cosmetic finishes are not covered by your builder anymore. It's considered normal wear and tear. So unless it's your foundation mm-hmm. or something major with your roof or a major system that maybe is covered in the 10 year, it's well, not going to well, be covered. Yeah. So in this case, what you're describing, like it's it's a cheaper alternative for the developer on their end. As a general consumer, you would have no idea. And yeah. you won't know for two or three or four years, and it won't be covered under that warranty anymore. And it'll be something you have to pay to replace where mm-hmm. your bathroom should last you a much longer amount of time than like three or four years because you have like yeah. a cracked tile or something like that. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, so, that I mean, really that's why that's what I said that it isn't realistic professionals. Uh, if you represent a homeowner, this thing you should know because homeowners, this is not in their business. This is not what they do for a living, right? No, but they want to buy a house. The one they buy a house, they put a lot of money, they're life saving, invested on the house. They want to leave, enjoy the rest of their life. Um, so, but then you, as a, as a professional consultant, a real estate consultant, should know all these things. Mm-hmm. And if you find this kind of things from certain builders, you have to flag up. Um, yeah. Especially, yeah, exactly. So, Bigger developers sometimes they can just get away because you know it's not the one house they have a whole house, uh, yeah. but it's, at some point if a lot of uh, homeowners are complaining, uh, you know agents are complaining they have to change that using a plywood, <laughs> in the cement board. That's 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 I would say stupid thing to do on installing tiles. Use Still, it's plywood, not man. that much space that you're even yeah. talking about. You know, like exactly. it's bathrooms are some of the smallest areas of the home you know in most homes right like the square footage of your all of your bathrooms combined is still only a small fraction of the whole house it i just don't feel like the juice is worth the squeeze in cheaping out on the product but i don't build a thousand houses a year <laughs> yeah. so no, that's i don't know who am i to say that's the case For- but it's very interesting and it's something that you should ask these questions as a consumer if you're ha- having yeah. someone custom build your home or buying even more important, buying a spec home, uh, because they're gonna just say like, this is what we use and this is what we build. And you think, yeah. oh, it's new, it's gonna be great. This is gonna last forever. Uh, I don't know. I've seen houses from the 40s, 50s and 60s that are built to last and will never ever, like the apocalypse will happen and that house will still be standing there. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> Older construction is much more stronger in general rule of thumb than new because even the materials, Wood in the old construction, if you say 100 year old house, go to DC Arlington, when you say two by four, it's actually two inch by four inch thick, solid, yeah. you know. So, yeah. when we say, right now, this day, when you say two by four, it's not actual two by four, inch and a half by three and a half, and wood, like you can even, you know, easily break. So, but yeah. That's all part of it. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like that's how I see that, how those de- developers building hundreds of thousands of homes, they are doing that type of work. Is, for me, it doesn't make sense because I'm building four or five homes a year. So there's no reason I want to try to save a couple of thousand dollars and put my reputation online. Um, but those people, big developers, what happened? They're probably building thousands of homes. If you save $2,000 per house, Think about how much they're saving. That's how they're looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what they're looking at, unfortunately. So as a you know, as a real estate professional, if you know it and you have, you know, probably go to the neighborhood, look at the other homes in the neighborhood that developer built, you just have to flag out. This is not right, you know? Yeah. Um, so but you know, yeah. it is it is what it is. But um, like I said, <laughs> you know, that's that's what it is, right? So sometimes it's not just waste be sitting, even the plywood and soft floor. I have seen people use half inch plywood, soft floor. And wow. that another another thing I can give you the example: the floor joist, the spacing of the floor joist, because you need to understand that plywood or OSB sitting usually is four foot by eight foot. There are other sizes too, but four foot by 
eight foot at the standard size, right? Yeah. So when you lay out those four by eight on the floor, you have to, you should be able to nail at the joint. Mm -hmm. So when your spacing of the joist is depending on that four feet or eight foot. So joists are either 12 inches on center or 16 inches on center. When you have a 16, you have a three joist for the four feet, right? Mm -hmm. So right on the joint or 19.2 inches on center. So 19.2 times four or five. So 19.2. A little inch. less than 100. So like what, uh, 99 so, inch? <laughs> yeah, so you have to remember eight foot is eight times 12, which is 96 divided by 19.2. So every five, there would be five joists mm -hmm. if you put 19.2 inches on center. So if somebody asks you, why you have a 19.2 odd spacing, that's why, right? Got it. Um, then there are some people I even do 24 inches on center. I never use 24 inches on center spacing for the floor joist. You will have a problem, whatever you do. Yeah, it'll start uh, sagging. And that's why if you use 19.2, most of the builders, 99.2, big developer, they do 19.2, and they may use half inch plywood. So a few years down the road, you have a problem. Okay. But for me, uh, you know, we don't do too many homes, but all the homes we do is spec home customer. It is a high end. People pay a lot of money. So all yeah. the choice are, I always do 16 inches in one center. doesn't matter. It's spacing. Mm -hmm. And three quarter inch plywood. Or there's a 23 by 32. It's close to, you know, 30, you know, three quarter inch plywood is standard advantage because those are the products. They will last forever type of construction. So you really need to know, hey, what what are you using here? Are you using fly, half inch plywood, three quarter inch plywood, regular plywood, Advantage? Because if you do regular nine, 10,000 square foot homes, if you have Advantage, which is like high performance product, yeah. you probably pay like four or $5,000 more in the house. So as a builder, I have a bet, I have interest not to use it to save four or $5,000 on the house, but, but you know, if you want to do the right thing and you're building this house, $2.5, $3 million house in McLean, uh, and you're trying to save two, $3,000, I don't know. It's the right thing. You know, it's something that makes sense. It so it in my mind. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I, I feel like I learned a lot just from that um, <laughs> overall. So then tell me a little bit about wall bracing. How does that tie in with all of this? Yeah, so wall bracing is the state walls, right? As you say. So um, if I don't know when, but maybe like two months ago or you know six weeks ago, we talked about this wall construction, wall bracing. Is that new construction nowadays with the open concept? People want a lot of open, you know, a lot of glasses outside, a lot of doors and windows, especially windows. Okay. Yeah. Even inside the house, they don't want any wall. They want everything open. The problem is, yeah, structurally, there's a limitation how open you want, right? Uh, how yeah. much open you uh, you wanted to do. Of course, you can do wider, then you have to go instead of wood, you have to go steel. That means your cost increase. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Oh, I want to go 50 feet opening uh, with wood construction. That's it. Okay, that's not possible. The joist would not expand 50 feet maybe 25, 20 feet, 26 feet joist. So mm -hmm. if you go more than 25, 26, depending on the 14 inch joist, 16, 18 inch joist, then if you wanna go longer, then you cannot use regular joist, means then, you know, it becomes all ex expensive construction, right? Not regular construction. Um, same thing with the with with the outside. Nowadays, everybody wants a lot of doors and windows, a lot of windows, big windows, no walls. So when you have no walls, it's a wall bracing is for the wind. If you have a wind, you yeah, have no yeah, wall, right. your building have an issue. So I'm gonna quickly show you if the, you know, especially in our area, where there would be when we design a building, you have to design for the load of the structure, people living in the house and also the wind load. So yeah. our wind is not as much as you see in, uh, you know, Ocean City or some part of, you know, community where directly exposed to water. But we still see some, it's not like in a Florida or Texas. Yeah. But you still see some wind. Um, yeah. And you oh, have sure. to consider that in mind. So if I, can I share my 
You should see it. Can I see it? Right? There you go. Yeah. Okay. Dude, what the hell is it? You are in the soul. Okay. Whoop. Dude, this is funky. All right. Um, do you see this, my slide? I do. Yeah, no, this is perfect. Okay, so this is a part of my you know presentation a long time ago. So this is what happens when, okay, right? Just try to give the wind and hurricane hurricane is is the next step of the wind <laughs> um, so you know some of the example outbreak and and the wind but okay so when there's a wind there are three things can happen in your house okay so listen this is just the example of the house it's gonna slide your ho whole house may slide so oh. the, that means do you see the sliding yeah <laughs> And so that may happen because if your house is not properly anchored into the foundations, then this may happen. So you have to make sure that the house is strong, but it's properly anchored into the foundation. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so you know, this is not the small big house, but this is a good example. Slide it. Oh. <laughs> so, so another slide one right off of the slab, like just right off the slab. <laughs> exactly. That's a sliding. So another oh. thing it can happen. So the arrow represent wind. Okay. So if you do it, so that's called overturning. Your your house can go upside down if it is not properly anchored. It's the same thing again. Okay. You can just flip. So like like this. All all. Your, <laughs> I don't know when how old these pictures are, but everything is upside down. You know. Yeah, and and these are in more like coastal areas or just places with like high wind like could this be in the midwest could this be i don't know there was a, a tornado a week ago in annapolis so like <laughs> could this be yeah. around here i mean if you don't even our area if you don't do it properly at least you have to do some minimum maybe it's yeah. not as much as you do in florida texas but you still have to do it right yeah it's just the example of what may happen with high wind got it so the other one I was talking about, it's kind of racking. You say you have a house, you have a lot of opening outside, and this may happen. There you go, racking. Oh, so, <laughs> turns into a rhombus. <laughs> yeah, rhombus. So how you prevent it and make sure that you don't have too many wall openings outside, too many or too big windows. So yes, if you wanted to, yeah, you can, but then you may have to use a steel framing. You know, there are some of the proprietary products, the panels you have to use, then all of a sudden your cost is to double, at least just for the wall only, right? Yeah. So I can design it, no problem. A lot of windows like a commercial building, but then, you know, I have to use it. The wood would not be able to do it. So I have to go with steel construction, then all that expense. So, but regular rule of thumb, if you want to do wood construction, you can't have too many openings outside, big openings. There are certain requirements you have to follow with the county guidelines or IRC guidelines. They will tell you if you have a wall of 100 feet, maybe 25 feet or 30 feet of that wall, it has to be solid wall at certain space. And there are certain guidelines you have to follow through. But this, you know, just those, those are the reasons that, okay, I want to have all the wall openings, on the house, um, before you ask that, talk to your engineer. When engineers say you cannot do it, you understand why you can't do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, this just just a racking, right? Oh. Um, so this is this is a pretty nice construction, but this, if you have it, it's a very good proportion of the solid wall and windows, but you don't see like this house anymore. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> not really. So. Nowadays is this is still okay. Look at the one on the right side. There's so many windows. There's yeah. no wall. You know, not much. Not much. So not much it means there you have to do is steel. So that there is no wood. So you have to do a steel construction, which is costly two or three times just for the wall. You know, but yeah. you need to understand if you have a budget, you want to do it. It's doable. I'm not gonna say you can't. It's just that it would be you know costly. Mm-hmm. 
See, you see, these are all new residential construction you see in the house, a lot of windows, but again, the construction, this is all steel. Yeah, well, and steel is not gonna bend over time. So while it might be an investment, your day-to-day -day enjoyment, like if you're someone who really wants to have all that light and all those windows or all those, like those giant sliding doors that kind of like com collapse like an accordion. Yeah. So much of the cost of those doors is like, the doors are not cheap, but so much of it is the framing and the ability for your house to not have to rely on putting weight on that door in order to be upright and not collapse. So, yeah. and I get to ask that all the time. They're like, do you think we could just knock this entire wall down? I'm like, I don't know about all of it. <laughs> like, exterior walls, like you need them for a reason. <laughs> yeah. So this was really helpful. The visuals were really helpful for me. It does. And also, I just want to say the Fairfax County, you can type with the Fairfax County has a lot of good information. So if you type oh. Fairfax County wall bracing, and this is the page it will, you'll uh, come to, and it has a, you know, org seat calculations. This is what we have to submit to the Fairfax County doing all the calculation for wall bracing, which is, uh, we just talked about, this is all free. See this one, all we have to do it. We have to submit this calculation for every project to the Fairfax County. Um, awesome. Then they, you know, they have this one, like for example, they have a, this is the requirement, classic wall bracing design. It will tell you all kinds of requirements about the design, how much of the wall has to be solid wall, what is the spacing, all this is there. This is the guideline we have to follow through as a structural engineer when we design a building, even the residential construction, you know. Awesome. Um, and I think that's it from my side. I'm gonna stop my sharing screen. And that, that's a wall bracing. I don't know. Um, that was a lot. I think that was... it, but I don't think we have a time for this one. Maybe next time. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Well, Raj, I learned a lot from this. So thank you so much. Sure. Um, and I look forward to expanding on this and continuing our builder and construction series next week. So if you have any questions about this, um, and we can also link to the Fairfax County website in the comments that Raj just okay, pulled up. Yeah. So if any of you want to do your own research or you want to look at that website, um, and obviously if you're in a different county, each county has their own resources, so take a look. Um, but thank you guys so much, and uh, Raj and I will see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.